Hello, family. Welcome back to another Predestined, Predestined Kingdom Ministries International Videos. I am Kenithia Johnson. Is that a raindrop or Kenithia J? And so, I just uploaded part one of Hypocrisy. And I didn't have enough storage to keep going, so it cut off. And then this is part two of Hypocrisy. So... What is being a hypocrite? <laughs> being a hypocrite, hallelujah, thank you, Holy Spirit. I already prayed before I came on here, so you guys are good. Hallelujah. I pray you get the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that the Lord is, is relaying through me in the name of Jesus Christ and the revelation. In the name of Jesus, I pray it hits your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. So... Being a hypocrite is telling people to do something that you're not doing. Hallelujah. So, sorry, my eyes. <laughs> so anyway, being a hypocrite is doing something that, it's like preaching something and you're not doing it, right? So, which is why I thank the Lord. We are very real and transparent on this channel. So, I saw a message that said, um, which led me to these videos. I saw a Bible verse and it said, you think I should pause this video? Okay, let me go get it. <laughs> it's in the book of Matthew and it's basically saying, judge people or, <sighs> I had it last night. I think it was last night, or was it this morning? I don't know. I think it was a Bible night, because you know I read the Holy Bible app. So basically, it was just saying, don't judge people, and you still have something wrong with you. Like, basically, don't point a finger at anybody because you have, like, what, three pointing back at you, or don't try to correct somebody on something you haven't corrected yourself on yet. One of those three should fit with you. So... It basically pushed me to talking about not being a hypocrite. Because that's basically what it's saying. So I come on here every day on these lives. And I tell y'all, go for Jesus. I say, go for the Lord. And if I didn't wake up and say at least a prayer to thank the Lord or give tithing offering or fast or um try to stop my addiction with my addiction with smoking marijuana and but it's control like because i allow god to come first in my life it doesn't like i don't put marijuana before god when it's time to pray i pray when it's time to stop smoking, I put the joint down. Like, when it's time to go on a fast, we fasting. Like, we include God in everything. And that's what God wants. He wants a real relationship. Yes, he still has me being a minister. Yes, he still has me being a prophet. When God calls you and he chooses you, not even you can stop it. If God has a plan for you to save other people, he just needs you to live out what he's telling you to do. Don't tell people to do one thing and you're not doing. That's why I always say, I, I've made, I've made so many videos like via YouTube, via Instagram, via Facebook. And I always say, if you work hard at trying to lose any addiction, whether it be smoking marijuana, whether it be porn, watching porn, watching porn all the time, whether it be drinking, whether it be, um, fornicating, any outward sin. It's a process because it's been, it's been, that spirit has been, we've been battling this spirit for years. And honestly, it's a generational spirit. We didn't just get here and say, 
we want to do that. No, we're born into sin. We are born into sin. And so, hey, that's why we have mantles. And when a prophetic mantle is placed, when a holy prophetic mantle is placed upon you, everything that's not of God has to go at some point in time. You have to fight it. You have to make the devil tired. You have to outlast the devil because see, he doesn't want you to stop this addiction, whatever it could be. He doesn't want you to stop because you're breaking a generational curse, which is the spirit of addiction that has been traveling down before you from your great, great grandmama to your grandma, to your mom, to you now. And so everybody likes different things. Everybody addiction is different. Okay. I know somebody who's addicted to taking the sleeping pills at night. They can't sleep. I know somebody addicted to eating a lot of food, craving a lot of sweets all day or eating junk food. I know somebody who's addicted to, like we always say, the, the most popular stuff, the porn, the sex, the fornicating. Your outward sins does not determine God's love for you. It's the way Hallelujah. You position yourself to get out of that. That's what God is looking at. Are you going to stay there and, and, and just sit in it? Or are you going to wake up and say, not today. Today I'm finna pray. Or I got too much idle time. I need to go hop on a live prayer call. This is why we have so many live prayer calls back to back. It's so you don't have no excuse on not to fight this thing. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Raindrops, sun, birds. God is speaking. Don't be the hypocrite. Don't be the hypocrite. Now, you like if you're like me, you just got to correct people. Like you still got to work in the addiction. Like I've met ministers and pastors. They're fully healed now, but before before they got to that point it was another step that they had to take before that step is what i'm trying to stay say and even when they were in their addictions or even when they were still um being made whole thank you holy spirit they still had to we still got to do it we still we still got to work in our calling we can't just say well, I'm going to watch porn all day. I'm not going to make a video and, and help save somebody life. Or I'm going to sit up here and have sex all day instead of um, going out here and helping this person. Like, you have a calling on your life. And your calling for God has to come first. You have to put God first in everything that you do. Once you do your part, it's up to the Lord. Like me, battling this marijuana thing, it's been a road, y'all. It's been such, <laughs> it's, I mean, everything makes sense now with my Judas being out there and who was putting this on me and the witchcraft and the curses and all of that. So it makes sense now, but the Lord was healing me from smoking and I was going back four and five months later. And it was because I didn't know the root of my problem. Stop. I didn't know the root of, 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 of why. Why do I keep going back? What's my triggers? Do I have a plan to stay healed? I didn't have none of that. And I, and that's why I kept going back. And so I hope you could learn from that today. Have a plan. Make a plan. Don't just say you're going to stop. How are you going to stop? What's going to keep you from stopping? What are your triggers that make you get to that point? Like, you have to get to the root of things so this could be dead. Because I'm tired of it. I, I'm so sick of this. Y'all, I've been smoking for a long time. Like, I've been smoking since I was 18, turning 19 years old. And I'm about to be 29 years old this year. Like, enough is enough. <laughs> like, I get tired. I only feel like wanting to smoke if, if, um, my, at my environment, like, 
it's the environment and it's the situation but i try not to make no excuses like for the most part i'm on a i'm on prayer call after prayer call like some of us need four and five. Oh yeah i don't be having a way to church which is a main thing like you trying to stop any habit you need to make sure you're in bible study you need to make sure you're at every prayer meeting you need to make sure anytime you could go to church you in church like you have to make a new life for yourself, a new you. And it takes time. It takes you practicing. It don't happen overnight. Now, he can't do it. He can just heal you. Don't, don't get God twisted. He can do the impossible. I have woken up and I just didn't want this. I didn't taste it. I smelt it and I didn't urge it. God can do that for you. You want that? You ask him. And you hold on tight to that healing. He can do that for you. You just got to have a plan. A plan to stay healed. And I didn't have a plan up until now. But and I learned that from Prophetess Dr. Maddie Nottage. Because, y'all, I've been trying to get healed for so long. God can show you himself. Like, <laughs> I done tried almost everything out of the book. Like, <laughs> of trying to stop. Um... I went to counseling before and a few months later after counseling because I had stopped going to count. That's probably what it is. I probably need to have extra money to go to counseling and all of that. But for the most part, God is my counselor. I think I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> anyway, y'all, don't judge people. OK, we judge, but we judge. And through the Holy Spirit. Like, don't just look at somebody and judge them because it makes you a hypocrite because even though you're not doing that particular thing, you're doing it somewhere else in another area of your life, okay? We all have different things that we like. We are all different, okay? Somebody else's addiction could be cocaine. It could be heavier. It could be, you know... And, you know, people go through stuff. You know, the Lord sees what you have went through. And, and, and that's why he's such a God of love. He's so forgiving. He's so merciful. This is why he doesn't just whip you at first. He talks to you. He, he shows you. He teaches you how to do it the way he's, he wants. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He shows you how to be who he has called you to be. Hallelujah. I pray this helps at least one, if not thousands of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't give up on God. Keep going. And don't let the devil tell you that God is mad at you. He only mad if you are Satanist or if you in that witchcraft, if you are a sorcerer. Because he say right now, especially in this season, he will not permit a sorceress to live. So... Don't think the Lord is mad at you if you are being obedient. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's what it boils down to at the end of the day. Following the Holy Spirit, being obedient. Because a lot of people will say you are not obedient, obedient to God looking at it from a carnal way. Looking at it from... Looking at it from their perspective and not the Lord God's perspective, which is why it's very important for you to build a one on one relationship with him. So that way, you know, for yourself what he would approve and what you don't approve. Also pray for spiritual discernment. Hallelujah. Spiritual discernment, spiritual discernment. So that way you're following the right voice. So that's my time. <laughs> God bless y'all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Again, I pray this helps at least one to 1,000 people get healed. God bless you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Shalom.